Breaking news, Big Play slays out versus the Seahawks and could be out for the rest of the regular season? Who are the Eagles going to match up versus DK Metcalf? The injuries don't stop there. Zach Cunningham, Cam Jurgens, along with Big Play Slay, out. Good news is Avanti Maddox is looking healthy and the Eagles activate the 21-day window. He's coming back. Also, Geno Smith's status for Monday night is questionable. Lastly, we break down some key updates for the Eagles going into Seattle. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast, and today we got a lot to get into, some breaking news, but before we do that, Eagle Nation, can I ask y'all for a favor? Help your boy out, hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss these videos. Let's rock! Adam Schefter tweeted, Eagles cornerback Darius Slay underwent arthroscopic knee surgery this week and will be out Monday night versus the Seahawks. But he is expected to be back by the end of the regular season per sources. Regardless how you feel about Big Play Slay, his podcast, and whatever, he is our best corner, and he's been having some pretty good games. Again, he's getting slandered for speaking highly of himself when the team is stinking, However, let's hear this clip and break it down before we get into further news. Let me address this. I saw a photo on the internet with a trash can with me and my boy James Bradbury on there. Come on now, all right, come on. And y'all know y'all know I'm a big time troller. I like to have fun. I ain't take it personal at all. So you see that's my profile pic. I think it's a nice pic, man. So come on now, you know, I'm a troller and I like to have fun, man. I think it was a good joke, man, good funny, but I think I played pretty good. I think I done had a very, very solid game, man. I don't think I had like two or three PBUs, you know, making plays, no catches, no nothing. Come on now. Out of all days, you want to put the trash can out there at, when I had a damn near a perfect game, you know what I'm saying? I could have did a lot of stuff better, better but maybe could have picked the ball, could have made some other plays, but overall, the game was great by me, you know what I'm saying? But as a team, we play worth the shit. You know, I'm going to be honest. I'm an honest dude. Again, I understand the frustration. He's talking about, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, and the team stinks. However, the team wasn't on the trash can, right? People saying Jason Kelsey and other guys would never say this on a podcast, and you're right. However, we would never put Jason Kelsey's name on the trash can if he had one, two, even three bad games. So again, I think he was addressing his stats because of the trash can talk. And of course, he got to talk about how he's playing on this podcast. It's not like he uploaded a video on Twitter talking about, hey, Eagle Nation, I'm playing fine, but the team stinks. Let me know your thoughts on that. However, we got to talk about who's going to replace him. While you're commenting your thoughts on Big Play Slay, who do you think should get the nod versus the Seahawks? Josh Job, Eli Ricks, or Keely Ringo? Drop it in the comment section. Nick Sirianni would not say who would start in Slay's place. He said he likes the Eagles option, including Ringo, Job, and Eli Ricks. If Ringo gets the start, it would be a meaningful opportunity for him. He's from the Seattle area and grew up going to Seattle practices slash games he planned to have family slash friends in the stands for his homecoming. Remember, just last week, we saw a lot of Keely Ringo versus the Dallas Cowboys. Some good and some bad. The double flag was crazy, but the deep ball was great coverage. He was on his hip pocket. Dak Prescott just made a beautiful pass, and he did have some nice tackles on special teams and also some big tackles that prevented first downs in the second half. So again, being that Slay normally plays the X wide receiver, whoever fills in for him, got to guard a lot of DK Metcalf. And again, we can't forget JSN and Tyler Lockett. It's going to be a tall task in Seattle. But real quick, back to the Slay injury and surgery. We're worried about Seattle, and we should be. However, the report said that he should be back by the end of the regular season, and maybe we can get by the Giants, the Cardinals, the Giants without him. But how healthy is he going to be going into playoffs? This is crazy. While we're here, let's get to some more crazy news. Jalen Hurts has an illness and he will miss Eagles practice today per Jeff McClain. He is still expected to play Monday, though, which is a good thing. We don't need any more shockers or crazy things going on with this Eagles team. Who needs a get right game for sure? Again, the difference between a Sunday and Monday night game could be the reason he's going to play at full health. I wonder how sick he is. They said it's more of a precautionary so the other guys don't get sick. But again, this is a must win because the number one seed is still in reach and for our psyche. However, this news right here is wild. I've never really heard this before. It's being reported that Kevin Byer persuaded Sean Desai to let the secondary handle their own scouting report versus the Seahawks this week. It's a task the coaches normally handle. 
more on the player-led move for self-accountability. Is it because they're taking accountability or they are starting to lose faith in their coach? This is big. A lot of craziness happened at the end of the season of once upon a time, a promise and season. I'm not giving up. This team is built to handle the adversity, but dang, the news is piling on. So let's actually get into some good news before we break down this Eagles and Seahawks matchup. So yesterday, we saw Avante Maddox on the sideline during Eagle practice playing catch and working out with his trainer, and we all thought he could be back for the playoffs. It just got confirmed while I was doing this video. Eagles are planning to open the 21-day practice window for nickel cornerback Avante Maddox, a lead source told Tim McManus. Maddox, currently on IR since week two, was seen yesterday ramping up his rehab from a torn pec injury. The Eagles are hopeful Maddox plays again this season. So we got to get to the playoffs and hold our standings pretty good. But imagine getting a healthy Darius Slay and a healthy Avante Maddox. We haven't seen him since week two. We always hear this saying, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And who knows, Avante Maddox could be the key for this defense because where has Sean Desai and his defense gave up the most yards? In the middle of the field. That's the nickel spot and the linebackers. Cunningham gets healthy. Shaq Leonard's there. And now you add Avante Maddox and a healthy big play slay. I'm just saying I am hopeful that this thing gets turned around when it really matters. Plus, we got young guys stepping up in the locker room. Rookie Jalen Carter is stepping up in team meetings. The rookie said he isn't afraid from asserting his voice whenever he feels it might be needed. He said the reception from his teammates has been positive this week as they tackle the adversity. I like how he used the word tackle adversity. We all know we got veterans that can step up in the locker room, but it's good to see the young guys who play a lot and who are responsible for a large portion of contribution is stepping up too. I love this guy, Jalen Carter. He is going to be a stud for a decade plus. So looking at the Seahawks, they're interesting team. Again, they got three really good wide receivers, but who do they go to most on third down? Not Tyler Lockett, not DK Metcalf, JSN. The rookie is their most targeted player on third down. And why am I speaking of third down? Because that's what the Eagles emphasize this week. Getting off the field on third down. We have been the worst third down team in the NFL for a long time. This got to stop. This is how drives keep going. This is how we can't get a rhythm on offense. The third down defense is the reason I can't sleep at night. I'm just kidding. Or am I? So let's look at the Seahawks offense. They average 21.5 points per game, which is tied for 17th. But on third downs, they're 26. So when it comes to moving the sticks, they rank 26 in the NFL. This is a great opportunity for this Eagles third down defense to get better. Now let's take a look at the defense for Seattle, which is allowing 24.5 points per game, which ranks 27th. And in the red zone, they rank 26. So we're talking about a get right game for the defense. This is a get right game for the offense. I'm talking passing and rushing. And yes, the run the ball signs, the run the ball talk, has to start now. Just last week, the Seahawks rush defense allowed Christian McCaffrey to run the ball for 145 yards on 9.1 yards per carry. The run defense is not that good. I'm talking about outside zone running, inside zone running, the things the Eagles want to do, they're not good at. So there's no excuse, absolutely no excuse, that Brian Johnson and Nick Sirianni, I don't care who's the main problem at this point, but there's no excuse that we don't run the ball 25 times. I don't even care if you run Jalen Hurts a little bit. Well, kind of calm down on that. But we got to run the ball at least 25 times versus this Seahawks front. Real quick, though, let's hear a word from our sponsor, BetUS, the easiest and best sportsbook app out there. And we're given a 125% bonus by clicking the link in the description and or the pinned comment section and signing up and dropping some money on it. Look at this parlay real quick. If you bet $100, and hit this two-leg parlay, you're winning $285. Plus, if you drop $100 by using this link, you get a free $125. Look at the parlay. Jalen Hurts will have over 250.5 passing yards, and Dallas Goddard will have over 42.5 receiving yards. So, 100 bucks turns to 285 if them two things happen. Uh, Seahawks defense is not that good, and Dallas Goddard had to get his feet wet against the Cowboys, but he's back. I got him going over 42. Lock that in. Thank me later. Lastly, I just got to say that this Seahawks team is powerful on offense, right? DK Metcalf, JSN, 
and of course Tyler Lockett. But they did lose four straight. I know it's going to be in their building. They're going to be rocking, blah, blah, blah. They're still in the NFC playoff hunt. But losing four straight, you can't lose to a team that lose four straight, especially on primetime. We had three back-to-back primetime games. We lost two. We cannot lose three. And when you look at the numbers, this is a get-right game for the offense and the defense. I know we're going to miss Slay. And again, we just talked about their wide receivers. However, they're not that good on third down. So what I want to see the defense focus on, getting off the field on third down. And the offense, just moving the ball, which we've seen. No turnovers, though, and scoring when you get in the red zone. Scoring in the red zone, no turnovers. Run the ball, pass the ball. It's not that hard. It just came off the Super Bowl. Get it together, birds. With all that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section, Eagle Nation. I love hearing from you on everything. Who's going to start for Slay? How do you feel about Avante Maddox being back? Jalen Carter, a stud? All that stuff. Plus, the link will be in the description for the Air Hurts hoodies. Mine's on the way. Probably the next video, too, you're going to see me rocking the Air Hurts shirt and or hoodie. With all that being said, I love y'all. Help your boy out by hitting that like button. Subscribe. And if you are subscribed, turn on that notification bell. Join notification gang. Until next time, you know what time it is. We out.